So a huge part of communication, people think, is, oh, it's what you're saying or even just how you're saying it. But I don't think it's that. If you go to social media, I think there's two dominant frequencies. One is the motivator. You can do it. Yes. You're awesome. You're worthy. You're great. Then there's the challenger. Get the job done. Do one more push up. There's more in you than you know. <laughs> and, and then there's the, the third one out there that's the healer. Your wounds will become your message. Whenever I felt in any level of psychological danger or relational danger, I had a cutting, destructive wit. Years ago, I identified that as one of my singular missions in life was I wanted to be a voice of hope and just always uh, convince people, help people see that the future is better than their past. I, I think it takes incredible courage to step out of your shadow and move into your light. I basically began to break down human communication on human frequencies. And one of the things that I think is really important is to realize that uh, human beings communicate in frequencies, but they're not always positive frequencies. They can, the same frequency can have a positive and negative expression of it. And, and when you're listening to different people, there are certain frequencies that you like to hear in, that you hear best, and certain frequencies that maybe you are repelled by and you actually shut down. And so a huge part of communication, people think, is, oh, it's what you're saying or even just how you say it, you're saying it, but I don't think it's that. I actually think there's a frequency that we communicate from. And when that frequency resonates with the listener, it, it creates this internal resonance where the person goes, yes, this is what I've been searching for. Or um, this gives language to what I've always felt. And, and in fact, when I spoke at um, your summit, right before I walked on stage, I, I had my talk kind of mapped out. I, I don't have an outline when I speak. I don't work from notes, but I work from the universe of thought. And then I pull down from that universe while I'm speaking. And right before I walked on that stage, I had been interacting with people, feeling the essence of your event, and I realized that your event actually has a dominant healer frequency, which I did not expect because, you know, it's called the school of greatness. So I thought it would have a, maybe a challenger frequency, you know, or, or what I would call a motivator frequency or, you know, a different kind of frequency or even a commander frequency. But what surprised me, Lewis, and as I've listened to you more carefully is I think your, your dominant frequency of choice is a healer frequency, that your internal intention is to bring healing to people from a place that you've been healed from yes, or a place that you're processing healing from. Mm -hmm. And so your event is a healer event. Yeah. And so right before I walked on that platform, I told myself, start with the healer frequency, which I would say I almost never do. Really? Yeah. And I, 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 I have a deep sense that I move to a healer frequency throughout my talks, but it's not usually where I start. Interesting. And, and so I've identified seven different frequencies. They're not the only frequencies in the world, but I would say they're the seven dominant or signature frequencies from which we communicate, which I would identify as motivator, challenger, commander, maven, professor, seer, healer. Okay. And when you listen to a speaker, one, if you go to Instagram, if you go to social media, I think there's two dominant frequencies. One is the motivator. You can do it. Yes. You're awesome. You're worthy. You're great. You know, and um, and then there's the challenger. You know, uh, you owe you. <laughs> you know, get the job done. Do one more push up. Right. You know, there's more in you than you know. <laughs> and, and 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 then there's the the third one out there that's the healer. You know, um, you, your wounds will become you know um, your 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 message and and. And you can almost hear the same message from different frequencies. Right. The, the, you know, the motivator saying, uh, Lewis, I know that you can do it. And the challenger, Lewis, I know that you can do it. Now get up. And then the healer, Lewis, you can get past your wounds and you can do it. And each one of them will begin. It's not just the words that are said. It's the frequency from which it's said. Mm. And, and I, I, I've began to realize that even when, you know, I, I have a fascination with, uh, I have so many friends who are atheists. And one of the things I began to realize is that many of them didn't reject God. They rejected the frequency from which God was communicated. Ah, uh, the way it was delivered to them. Yeah. Or the, the messenger was delivered to them. Because unfortunately, many times, the frequencies that are being used to communicate important truths are the shadow frequency. When I first put together the seven frequencies, I asked people, give me a TV show or a movie, and we'll break down the characters. Overwhelmingly, people wanted friends, and secession. Uh, yeah. I didn't even know friends was still a thing, but yeah. it is still a thing. It's huge, yeah. It's huge. So I looked at secession because I, I, I love secession and all the characters in it. Yeah. And I was terrified 
when I finished, I couldn't find a single one of the seven frequencies. Really? And I thought, oh no, this doesn't work. And then I went back and went back to the pilot, started watching the first three shows and I realized, oh my goodness, every frequency is the shadow frequency. Of every character. Of every character. Oh my gosh. There isn't a positive frequency in the entire show. And, and so instead of the, the motivator, yeah, you, you, you have the performer. Instead of the, the challenger, you have the manipulator. Instead of the commander, you have the dictator. Oh. Each time there's a frequency in succession and all seven frequencies are laid out in that show, but they're always the negative frequency. And I thought, this is, this is a really telling dynamic because we're learning how to communicate from the shows we watch. We are learning how to communicate from the characters on our, in our favorite films and our favorite shows and our favorite series. And that's the frequency that we're actually beginning to resonate with and the frequency we think will bring us success. It's also just a familiar thing if you're watching something over and over again. Yep. Even if you don't believe it's the correct way of being, it's hard to just not consume something constantly and be in an environment and not bring in some of that into your life probably. I don't know. It's like you have to really check yourself. You do. And set an intention of like, okay, this is entertainment. It's not, I'm not going to take on these behaviors um, and really disassociate from this from my way of being. I don't know. When I was in my 20s, I realized I had a defense mechanism. Uh, when I, whenever I felt in any level of psychological danger or relational danger, I had a cutting, destructive wit. And I was fast and I was cruel. Cut and, people down. And and I, and... I, I could cut like a stiletto. Wow. And the moment someone would start bantering with me, it, it, just, it was like open game. Because if you banter with me, if you cut me down, if you said something negative to me, if you tried to make fun of me or embarrass me in front of people, it just, it just turned on. Wow. And it was somewhere in my early 20s where I realized, I don't know how to mediate this, so I have to kill it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, yeah. I, because I, being funny is great. And I love doing stand-up and I love doing comedy. I love being funny. But I realized I had to change the rules for me. I, and I changed the rules. I would never be funny at the expense of someone else. I would only be funny at my own expense. You just, you affirm and compliment people. You make fun and demean yourself. And, and I don't mean demeaning in a negative way where you're thinking badly yourself, but you just you become self-effacing. And that shift in my 20s changed my life. Because I was able to take that same communication strength and now use it in a way to build and affirm and encourage other people. And I love the fact that now decades later, one of my core values is to be a voice of hope. And years ago, I identified that as one of my singular missions in life was I wanted to be a voice of hope. And I wanted to be a voice of hope to people who were overwhelmed by life, despair, depression, anxiety, stress, and or great challenges. And just always uh, convince people, help people see that the future is better than their past. Yeah, And I think that shift in my early years going, I'm not going to use the negative frequency uh, to make myself look more powerful. I'm gonna use my frequency in a positive way to empower other people. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think so many people stay in a negative frequency for so long in their life and they're unable to get out of that lower level frequency? The first thing that comes to my mind is fear. I actually think we stay in negative frequencies because we're afraid. We're afraid that if we actually move toward our positive frequency, we'll become vulnerable. Or our, authentic our authenticity will, um, will create liabilities for us because now people will see the real us or they'll see the human us or they'll, they'll see the vulnerable us. And, uh, you know, when you, if you watch like Secession and you look at, you know, Roman and, and you look at, he's always entertaining, like he's, you know, but what he really wants so desperately is to be loved, you know, and, and with each one of those characters, you realize there, you get these moments of these glimpses of, into their brokenness, these glimpses into the humanity, the, the part of them so desperately wants to be seen and known, healed and loved. And, and they can't because they always go back to their default mode. I, I think it takes incredible courage to step out of your shadow and move into your light. And, 
and 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 I think it's true with every one of these frequencies. And and the way I would I say if, say we would be best to identify a frequency is when you're communicating and you're thinking about yourself, you're usually working from your negative frequency. When you're communicating you're, and you're thinking about the contribution you can make in the lives of others, you're working from a positive frequency. And, and ironically, it, it will shift fear. When it, it, I just spoke at an event. There were, I think, 7,000 people live, 150,000 people online, and 350,000 that will be registered in the end. And I didn't feel afraid at all. I didn't feel, I felt wonderful energy on that platform. And ironically, right before I got on stage, you would think I would say something like, this matters, or, you know, change the world, or you can do it. I said two words to myself, have fun. That's great. And because I, I felt like a huge part of it in that event is that people just needed to know that life can be enjoyed. Now, this is this huge business event. It's all these leadership principles. It's you know high management. It's all these CEOs. And, and there's a certain point where I'm, I'm wondering, do you wake up in the morning and love your life? You know, and uh, are, do, you, do you take the time to enjoy taking deep breaths and looking at sunrises and, you know, just seeing the beauty of life all around you? And I wanted to get on stage and that, on that platform and just have fun and create a moment where other people could take a deep breath and go, oh, life can be really beautiful. It can be really good. And the moment you get out of yourself and you're just asking yourself, how do you, how do you serve this moment? You know, how, how do you help the people in this room? You're moving into a positive frequency, which by the way, is one of the things I just love about you. Yeah, I, I, I genuinely, I, I, I get to know you outside of this space, you know, and I, I just know uh, how much you care about people, how much good you want to do in the world and, and, and how important it is for you to, to, to make it a positive impact on the world while you're alive. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. And. And every time you do that, you're communicating this incredibly powerful frequency to the world that not only affirms other people and encourages them, but it, it actually in, it puts them in tune with this positive frequency where now they can actually pass it on to other people. Hmm. So how do, you, how do you set others to be more in tune and more in alignment with their highest level of frequency? How can each individual do that for others? Without making it sound too simplistic, I actually <laughs> yeah. think... Simple is good sometimes, you know? Yeah, I think it's love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that when you're motivated by love, the frequency moves to its purest light. And when you're motivated by the need to be loved, it can actually become self-indulgent and destructive. And But when you are motivated to love, and um, and, and I know this is it feels too idealistic, but where you're just genuinely trying to live your life for the good of the other, and I know that's a high ideal, right? But it's okay. We can aspire to toward, toward those, right? We, you know, yeah. and we can all accept the fact that you know we're broken and fragmented and imperfect and and, and all those other things. But I, I think the the beautiful thing about love is that uh, love can come, from, I think, from a really beautiful and pure place in your soul. Yes. And and you know, so when you communicate, you want to communicate in a way where you're genuinely serving the good of others.